Good morning. Praise the Lord. Let's go Lord in prayer. Father God, we come to you today in the name of Jesus. We're so thrilled and honored that we can. Thank you for all that Jesus did for us through his death, burial, and resurrection. Because of Jesus, we're new creatures in Christ Jesus, ruling and reigning in Christ in this life. And Father God, we pray for our nation. You said in your word, I exhort therefore that first of all, supplications, prayers, intercession, giving thanks, be made for them authority over us. So Lord, we thank for our president, our vice president, senators, and congressmen, legislators, Supreme Court judges, federal, state, local judges, governors, mayors, police officers, the Armed Forces, FBI, CIA, DHS. Lord, we claim our salvation, deliverance, and protection, that they hearken diligent voice of the word of God. Thank you, Lord, for leaders around the world, nation, world that every nation has a gospel preached as a witness, and then they should come. And we pray for all those labors out there, Lord, that they preach your word in season out. Thank you, Lord, that every nation is having a minor revival, including ours. And God, we thank you, Lord, for all the body of Christ. That each and every believer become baptized in the Holy Spirit, speak in other tongues, being taught about who they are in Christ, and going forth in this life, ruling and reigning in Christ. And Father God, I thank you, Lord, for anointing me today. Don't be saying do what you have me saying do. Thank you, Lord, for giving me out of the Holy Ghost. Now pray, follow us, Lord. We hear your word. And hear from the Holy Ghost. We'll go forth and become doers' word. And let the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Okay, let's turn our Bibles over here to the book of uh, Philippians, please. We'll go to Philippians chapter 4. Now notice here, we'll start here, um, let's start here in verse 4. Now the scripture says here, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Let your moderation be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing, but everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which Pastor Nurse said, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, brother, what things are true, what things are honest, what things are just, what things are pure, what things are lovely, what things are good, poor, being virtue, being praised, think on these things. Now notice here, it says here in verse 6, be careful for nothing. I think one translation is don't worry about anything. Now, how, how could we do that? Well, like 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7 says, cast all your care upon him for care for you. Now, that's what we want to do as believers is get our worries over to our Lord. Now, that's not easy to do because many times, you know, we did that maybe and then kind of went back and took it back again by worrying again. No, the Lord wants us to turn them over to him once and for all. And in fact, the Amplified Bible says that. But here in this Philippians chapter 4, verse 6, it let your requests be made known with thanksgiving. Well, that's something important for all of us to do as believers. It's easy to kind of get caught up with, you know, things that's going on in the world or our life or our church or ministry or whatever, you know, and kind of get derailed or sidetracked about being thankful. You know, I don't know too many things more important than thanking God for everything, not for the bad stuff, but for who we are in Christ Jesus and building from there. So the, it says here, let your request be made known to Thanksgiving. So I wonder what to do after I prayed the prayer of faith or gave the faith decree. Well, here's something I can do is begin to thank God and let my request be made known to Thanksgiving. And that's so important that we do that in Jesus' name. And not, I, you know, when you get caught up with griping and complaining and can't, you can't see the good in the world, that never works out good. If you notice people get into that, and we've all had some situations in that, but thank God the Lord reminded us that we need to be thankful. Or we heard someone preach about it and it stirred us up again. And we do. I, now here in Philippians, you have to, for, or excuse me, uh, here in Philippians, but go to Ephesians chapter 5. Now verse 20 says, <clears throat> Giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father, name Lord Jesus Christ. Well, that's kind of plain, isn't it? I mean, giving thanks always for all things. There's things that we need to remind ourselves that we're so glad we have. First of all, what, what we do have, what's materialized a lot. But also those prayer requests, our faith projects that we believe that we've received, thanking God that we believe we received those. That, that's one way of making, letting our requests be made known with thanksgiving. And by praising God and thanking God. Now here in Philippians, excuse me, keep wanting to go to Philippians. Let's go over here to 1 Peter. And notice here, I want to read this again, and first, or read it at all. We quoted earlier, 1 Peter chapter 5. Now the scripture says here, a certain verse 6, Humble yourself therefore in the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. Cast all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Now again, Amplified says once and for all, all your anxieties, all your concerns, turn over the Lord. Now why do we do that? Or why are we supposed to do it? Well, because we need him to work him out for us. Now here in, in 1 Timothy, back to a few pages there, in 1 Timothy, the scripture says here in chapter 4, Let's start verse 1. Now the Spirit speaketh spreadly in latter times, some should depart with faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctors of devils, speaking lies and hypocrisies, having their concert on art, forbidden to marry, command staying 
uh, for meats, which God had created to receive with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. For every creature of God is good, and nothing be refused if it is received with thanksgiving, for it is sanctified by the word of God and for prayer. Now here the scriptures tell us that, about being thankful for our food, thanking God for our food. Just like what we could do, you know, maybe you're in a restaurant someplace, you just, you know, pray over your food and give thanks for it. Now the Bible says when we do that, our food is sanctified and nourishes our body. Now, why we're in 1 Timothy, in 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 1 says, I exhort therefore that first of all, supplications, prayers, intercession, giving of thanks, be made for all men. For kings, well, that's for our leaders we have, and for all that are authority, that we may lead a quiet, peaceful life, all God and us. For this is good, except the sign of God our Savior, who would have all men to be saved and come to knowledge of truth. For this one God, one read between God and man, that is the man Christ Jesus who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. Now, verse 8. I will therefore the men pray over, lifting up holy hands out after doubting. So we're instructed here to pr <clears throat> pray for our nation or pray for our leaders of our nation. And not only that, but pray over our food or, and give thanks for it. And give thanks for our leaders. So you see, this ends up being a, a lifestyle for you and I of giving thanks. We're always, we're look, always looking for something to thank God for. It's really easy to gripe and murmur. And that, you know, tries to get on us <laughs> maybe every day. But nevertheless, if we rejoice and praise God. I've watched people, you know, I've watched people ever since I've been born again. And I notice the people that somehow they're always grateful. They're always thankful. Not that they don't have problems or haven't been through some severe trials. But it seems like they just always get through them. And I've learned by watching people, Christians, born again, that are thankful. And that's so important for us to remind ourselves. Think about this. We're giving thanks for our food that we're going to eat. We're giving thanks for the leaders of our nation. And we're giving thanks in all things. And for all things. And they're always supposed to give thanks. So the Lord's being in shows here a pattern about how we can give glory to God and praise God and be thankful. It's more than just something we're, we're putting on a show, trying to impress people. No, it's not that at all. It's just that we want to have this habit of being thankful. Looking for something good in a situation. Now, we'd all say amen in church when we heard that preach. But nevertheless, really, you know, begin to look for it. And being expected in Jesus' name. It's amazing what praising God and thanking God does. Paul and Silas sang praises to God when they was in jail and they got released. a supernatural release. So think about the trouble they were in. But they be, they prayed, and who wouldn't? But they begin to sing praises to God. And the prayers were certain. At midnight, see? Don't know if you'd want to wake up too many people like that, would you? You know, but they did. And nevertheless, God actually got them out. That's what praising God can do in the midst of a bad situation. We're not thanking God for the problem. You know, they were in jail, but the jail didn't get inside of them. And so we, we as believers, we can learn this way. We can begin to praise God. Let our requests be made known with thanksgiving. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. In all things, give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Being grateful and being thankful, like over our food and for our nation, for our leaders, you know things could get a lot worse. So why not be thankful for what we do have and begin to expect the good to happen? And all of us believers, if we just practice that on a daily basis, they're always reminding themselves, I need to be thankful. I need to be praising God and thanking God in Jesus' name. And by doing so, many things just work out in our life that, you know, I'm sure they wouldn't have ever worked out. They came to us. We're not thanking God for the problem, but thanking God we're delivered in Jesus' name. Thanking God for what the word says, the by straps were healed. Thanking God he supplies all of my need according to rich glory of Christ Jesus. I shared with you before, I uh, first got saved and, and uh, ended up having to live with other people. I'm so you know, devastated financially. I just, you know, if it hadn't been for God's mercy and their generosity, I'd been sleeping in my van. So um, anyway, I got this job, this place, working this insulation factory. And it was uh, working the night shift and it was, it, it was just, it was, it was terrible. But I made myself stay thankful. And I don't care how tight I got my collar, the insulation seemed like it get down. I mean, this stuff was like worse than baling hay, and I've done that. So uh, anyway, so I, I knew I was re recently born again, baptized in the Holy Spirit, and I'd be thanking God and praising God. So I'd make myself do this, see? Offer up, I guess I'd be offering up a sacrifice of praise to God continually. as free lips give thanks to his name, as Hebrews 13, uh, 15 says. So anyway, well, then I noticed on the board there, in, the, in one of the rooms there, uh, you know, like the mess hall, where we call that thing, break room. So there was a notice up. They wanted, they needed a manager. Wow, see, that paid like 50 cents more an hour. 
And so, hey, no problem, you know. I've always had employees, you know, and it's easy, you know, if they look at my resume. But anyway, so I started, you know, claiming that, I guess, and praying for it. But anyway, so they called me into the office. And I thought, boy, see, if you just stay faithful and keep praising God, you, you get this bonus, you get this raise, you get this uh, higher position. So anyway, so they call me in there, and I'm going to get promoted. And they said, you know, this is the first time we've done this history of our company. Really apologize, we have to do this. We got to lay you off. <laughs> now, you know that was so demoralizing. And I walked out of the place. It's January. It's freezing weather outside. Walking out and getting my van, and I'm and, and tears are just streaming down my cheeks. I'm crying. So I felt like such a loser. Can't even keep this job. Well, but I knew I needed to start thanking God and praising God that He's taking care of it. I don't remember exactly what I said, but. Begin to praise the Lord. Now, thank God I got laid off or fired, whatever you want to call it. So, uh, you know, it's a few days after that that God got me this miracle floor covering job. That was a trade I had. And I had that till I went to Bible school. But I learned something from that, to be thankful, to be praising God and thanking God. Now, all kinds of problems rose up on that floor covering job I had. I mean, there's always a threat there you're going to lose your job. But I noticed it's important, and I've been perfect at this, but I noticed it's important to be thankful. Thanking God, not for the problems. Thanking God that you can do the job. Thanking God that you've got help. Think, think about pe many people. Bless their hearts today. So there's always something you and I can be thankful for. And that opens up more opportunities to us to be thankful and be grateful. And again, you know, we learn from being around other Christians that are grateful and are thankful. That they're always praising God and thanking God. You know, let's go over to 1 Corinthians and read here in chapter 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, please. Now notice here, the scripture says here, verse 57, be, But thanks be to God, which give us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Now chapter, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 2, about a page over, verse 14 says, Now thanks be to God, which always causes the triumph of us to cry up in Christ Jesus, and make manifest the Savior's knowledge by us in every place. So think about this. Both of these scriptures are telling us to be thankful. See, that, that 1 Corinthians again says, but thanks be to God, which give us up the victory of the Lord Jesus Christ. And then chapter 2 of 2 Corinthians, verse 14 says, Now thanks be to God, which always causes us to triumph in Christ Jesus. That key word is always. So in the midst of those dilemmas, those problems, we can begin to thank God and praise God that we are what his word says we are. I knew this minister a long time ago. When I first got saved, I heard stories about him. He pastored a church in my hometown, Simply God Church. And uh, and then, you know, after being there such period of time, they, they sent him somewhere else. To, and he, it, it's sort of like his ministry was starting churches. And just about the time he'd get a church going, you know, he'd sense in his heart it's time for him and his wife to go on someplace else. They had at least a, a daughter. They may have, may have two kids, but at least had a daughter. And she's, so she's a little girl. She grows up, you know, he's a pastor of Assembly God churches. Well, a period of time went by. And, uh, you know, I got born again then, baptized in the spirit, and I'd heard stories about him. So I always wanted to meet him. And thank God God worked it out. I got, I got to be with him a couple times. In fact, he preached for me sometime. So anyway, um, <laughs> I know she's always thankful and always grateful. And no matter what was going on, and my brother, uh, the one church in my hometown, my brother was on the board of directors of the church, or elder, whatever you call him. And so he knew some of the stuff this pastor went through. But he'd always tell me how, how thankful the pastor was, how always grateful. I mean, in the midst of storms, he was always be thankful. We have problems. Well, I got to be around him. He stayed in my house. And he, sure enough, that's, he, he, you never saw him when he wasn't thankful, you know, as far as I know. But anyway, I'm sure he had his moments. But he was always thanking God, praising God, rejoicing. Well, okay, so he, he struggled financially because he'd just get going. And then him and his wife, Stella, they'd take off and go start another church. So they no sooner got on the, off the ground. It's going real good. They could support a pastor. And he'd go and, and did miss many times. You know, up, I think through his 80s. So anyway, so his daughter ends up growing up, and she goes off to college, and Christian college, and she meets a guy there, and they start dating, you know, they graduate from college. And, and so her, the boyfriend she had, eventually she married, worked at Aubrey's restaurants, you know, like fast food. And so finally, he became a manager of that. And as a process of time, I think he ended up opening 14 of those restaurants. Well, he'd go to his father-in-law, which is the person I'm talking about, and he'd say, uh, he'd take car keys and some, you know, legal paper, you know, legal papers, um, 
and said, here, I just bought you a new Mercedes. Now, my hometown, that, that was a big deal, you know, to see a Mercedes. I don't remember seeing one when I was a kid, and I was a lawyer had one. But anyway, so he bought, it, bought his father-in-law a Mercedes. Well, his father-in-law was out traveling, preaching, also starting another church, and he gave that car away to some, some pastor. And so that son-in-law bought him another car, another Mercedes, and gave it to him. So finally, this kept going on for a few years, and finally the son-in-law said, listen, I, I want you to drive a Mercedes, Okay. Now, I don't care how many you give, give away, I'm going to keep giving you one. You know? But I noticed that the blessings of this man, this dear pastor I'm talking about, took him and his wife over in every area. And one of the key ingredients about them is they're always thankful. I'm sure, they had their moments. Everybody does. But they had a lifestyle of being thankful. You see, we, we do learn from watching other Christians, you know? Like one person said, nothing else I learned what not to do, you know. But no, we pick up the good things. Or you may have a Christian friend or a minister that you know pretty well, and they're always giving. You ever have a friend like that? They, they teach us a lot. I mean, just all, every day they're giving. They're always giving something away, food, whatever, money, things that they got, stuff they got in their house, auto bills, anything. They're just always, they have a lifestyle of giving. So we can learn from people like that. It challenges you and I to be givers. We think, well, wait a minute, you know, these people give. You know, I know the Bible teaches me to give. And, you know, in other words, I can learn from other people. They're, they're a good example. So there's, we have people in our life, usually, this real good, just natural, thanking God. Well, I need to be thankful. I remind myself, you know, this dear sister, this brother, they're always thankful. I need to be thankful. And I'm around Christian friends. I know a minister of mine, a friend of mine, I haven't seen him in years, but he passes the church. He's done quite well. But he, is, he was always giving. Even he he comes stay at my house, him and his wife, and and you know they'd leave, and I'd go back, you know, check their room out and see if they left anything, and you know, because um, they converted it, you know, to, so they'd stay there, and they always leave a check, an offering, and that's just they were just always known for this. Come to find out, you know, the car they were using was somebody else's car; they didn't have a car, but today they've done quite well. But I noticed their life what rubbed off on me; they always gave. They always a giver. And somebody else, you know, you notice that they're just always thankful. Now, if we put all these together, we got quite a life of always giving, always praising God, always thanking God, being grateful, being thankful. Not cheesy stuff. We're not trying to impress anybody. But the depression will leave by being thankful. You know, put on a garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. And so, and you learn from watching some Christians, they just seem like <clears throat> they're always faithful to do whatever they're supposed to do. If they're an usher, I mean, no matter what, they're going to get to church and usher. Or to the meeting usher. They're just faithful. Well, we can learn from people like that. Thank God that God puts people like that in our life. That we can see what they do. And we learn. Now, with praising God, that's how I learned how to start praising God. Again, I got born again at Pentecostal Church. And at the time, I didn't know what that even meant. And they raised their hands. They yelled, praise the Lord. And, you know, hot word and scream and everything else. But <clears throat> they were always praising God. So I want to know how to praise God. So I'd hear them say, praise the Lord. I'd hear them say, thank you, Jesus. I'd hear them say, hallelujah. And I see, I know, that, that was all unfamiliar to me. I mean, church I grew up on, we never heard nothing. I mean, a baby cry, but they had a nursery if you take the baby to, you know. But these people were very noisy. They were very loud, very vocal. And they lift up their hands. We read there in, there in 1 Timothy chapter 2 about lifting up holy hands unto God. Well, this is all new. So I started following their example. I'd say, praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. How'd you learn? By other people. And then later on, I got scriptures about it, like some of the ones we read today. So that helped me to learn about praising God and being around people that are faithful to do what they're supposed to be doing. Learn from there. Be around people that are givers. They're just always going to give. They're just, bless God, they're always going to give. Well, that, that's good for me to see. And it's good for me. To, that can rub off on me. And by praising God and being thankful. So we can learn from one another. I mean, everybody knows something I don't know. So I can learn something from them that they have a, a, a good habit going here of being a blessing. And we can be. And we read there, you know, but thanks be to God, which give us sense of victory, Lord Jesus Christ. Now, thanks be to God, which always causes a triumph in Christ. By always, us always thanking God. Like we read there in, in uh, Phil, uh, uh, Philippians chapter 4, verse 6. Let your requests be made known to thanksgiving. 
Now, after we pray the prayer of faith, or after we claim something, in Jesus' name, spoke to the mountain, what can we do? Well, one thing we can do, you and I can do, we, we can still be thanking God and praising God. That's a done deal in Jesus' name. And just praising God for who he is. Thanking God for who he is. Thanking God we're saved. Thanking, thanking God we're baptized in the Holy Spirit. Think of all the people that are not. Thanking God by faith that we're healed, we're delivered, our needs are met in Jesus' name. Praising God and thanking God. Uh, you know, it's just so important. That's how Paul and Silas got out of jail, by singing praises unto God. And thank God for that, you know. The Syrophoenician woman, she worshiped the Lord and got her daughter delivered. Who was demon-possessed? Think if she'd got an attitude and just left because she didn't like the way she was treated. No. You know, we all have emotions. We all have feelings. And too often times we listen to those. No, we need to listen to inward witness about what God wants us to do. And, of course, do his word. But be thankful. Be praising God. There's, you know, the early church, they rejoiced. They were persecuted for the gospel. How about that for Jesus' name? And as believers, you know, no one wants persecution. But in the midst of all those things, we can praise God and thank God that we've got the victory in Jesus' name. The battle's the Lord's, the victory's mine in Jesus' name. And I just want to praise and thank you, Father God, that according to your word, you supply all of my needs. And I just want to thank you, Lord, you're taking care of this in Jesus' name. I've turned it over to you. I'm not going to worry about it. I'm not going to fret about it. I'm not going to be stressed out about it. I've turned it over to you. Now, I've done that before. You ever done that? And then a little bit later, go back and pick it up with worry. <laughs> well, that's not what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to turn it over once and for all. See, how can we keep it over there? Well, one thing we can do is keep praising God. He's got the problem. That doesn't mean you and I don't do nothing in the natural, but we can keep on praising God that's taken care of in Jesus' name and by just maintaining the joy. Like James said, count it all joy. When you fall in diverse temptation, know this, the trial of your faith, work with patience. But let patience have a perfect work, that you may be perfect and tired, wanting nothing. Think about this. Get the place you, you're not wanting for anything. Someone says, is there anything you need? Nah, no. That's how God wants us to live. It starts out by thanking God, by rejoicing God. Let our requests be made known with thanksgiving. Count it all joy. Put on a garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Depression, worry, fear comes to everybody. But one way to keep it from getting on us is praising God, worshiping God. If it, had, it has gotten on us, then we're praising God and thanking God until it gets off. That's why it's important that we keep on praising God and thanking God for what his word says about us. And decreeing and declaring, always. Thank God for what God gave us. He gave us the name of Jesus. He gave us his promises. He gave us his word. He, his word never fails. And he gave us ways to activate that covenant that he, we have through Jesus Christ. One way we can do that is by praising God and thanking God that we believe. When Jesus had five loaves and two fishes, he gave thanks for that. He didn't think, oh, this is ridiculous. I mean, five loaves, two fishes, like maybe some of us would have done. No, what did he do? He gave thanks and fed. They fed the 5,000 plus and had 12 baskets left over. That's what Jesus did when he was facing a situation that in natural, he didn't have enough. But by thanking God and praising God, and we read there about thanking God for our food. See, so let our request be made known with thanksgiving. It is important. You know, it's just a good place to start over your meals. And when you're eating, start praying and thanking God for our food. And, of course, every day, thank God for our leaders of our nation. That's important. You know, to always give thanks and praising God. When, when people become unthankful and ungrateful, it's when blessings begin to dissolve. They seem they. But as a person praises God, they seem to be attracted to him. And see that we want to be thankful for our nation every day and for our leaders. Look for the good. Thanking God for it. Not complaining, you know, but being thankful. Thanking God. I mean, you know, it could be bad weather outside and you're around some Christian. There's always thanking God. Well, praise God. You've been in the middle of a snowstorm. they got something to thank God for. Well, that's, yeah, that's a good example. You know, they, they realized there was something there to be thankful for. And that's important. And that's how things increase in our life. It, it attracts blessings to us. It's amazing what being thankful will do for us and for our nation and for the world. And we remind ourselves that, hey, we're saved. Jesus is our Lord. That we got to escape here from hell because of that. And be grateful and thankful that we're, our name's written in the Lamb's Book of Life, rejoicing and praising God. As we do that, then God works in our life. And it's important that we do this. You see, after, even through testimonies throughout the Old Testament, as people worship God, what God would do in their life, and thankful. Praising God, like Jehoshaphat, got the praisers out there, put them on the front lines. 
Well, we learn from that. There's a reason why we do praise God. We, we praise God because we give honor to God. We praise God because that's one way we can release our faith. By praising God and thank God that we believe it's done in Jesus' name. We prayed. We believe it's done. We prayed the prayer of agreement. We decreed it. We declared it. We claimed it in Jesus' name. Now, what can I do? So I want to know, what can I do? I can start praising God and thanking God. And thank God for the blessings that Thanksgiving opens up the doors of opportunity. People like to be around someone that's thankful. You know, who wants to be around someone that's always miserable all the time? They, no matter how much you try to encourage them to be thankful about something, they look for the bad. Well, you know, that's probably, we've all had those moments, but, you know, we, we can't stay there. We've got to, you know, get a hold of ourselves and stir ourselves up and go back to being thankful and being grateful. And God taught us how to do this in his word. And as we offer up sacrifice to praise God continually, that is a fruit of lips give thanks to his name. And we're, we're priests, we're to give praise to God. And if some people are given to singing, well, good, sing praises unto God. That's so important, too. And you can sing in tongues when baptized in the Holy Spirit. That's great, too. But all of us can be ver verbally vocalize thanksgiving. Thank you, Lord. I worship you, Lord. I praise your name. Abraham just kept giving glory to God. And he got his miracle baby. So we learn from these testimonies. What triggered the blessing to manifest in their life? Though, it be, though God is in God's mind is already done. He'd already given it to them. Well, what did Abraham do? One thing he did, he kept giving glory to God. And by doing so, that kept his faith activated. And as believers, that's, that's what we want to do is be thankful. Be grateful and read like through the Psalms, Psalms about being thankful. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all this to me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget all his benefits. Who forgiveth all thy iniquities, who healeth all thy disease, who redeemeth thy life destruction, who crowneth thee love and kindness and tender mercy. And when it comes to your face of bills or mountains of problems, by speaking to them and decreeing, decree and declaring they're paid, they're gone, it's moved in Jesus' name, it's dissolved, we can, what we can do is just keep thanking God. I've heard people give testimonies how they've received healing. They claim the scripture, stood on the word of God. I mean, some stuff was real, you know, just, yeah. But they kept thanking God that they were healed according to the word of God. And sure enough, one morning, one day, one place, somewhere, everything was gone. And the Israelites, it's gone. That's fantastic. And that's how we want to live as believers. Again, brothers and sisters, we can learn from other people by the good traits that they have. Like the people that's always, always given. That challenges you and I to give. And the people that's always been faithful to tithe. That challenges you and I. And the people that say, I know a pastor, no matter what, I mean, he's been behind months. Him and his wife didn't get a, a, any money. And what little bit would come to that, because the church is going through a real problem. I think it was building a church. You know, building fun thing. And people left. And they got a lot of problems. But nevertheless, him and his wife stayed thankful and kept stayed faithful to tithe it. Don't you think that didn't challenge me? I still think about him. You know, he has no idea. that by He said, I, when my wife and I, we stayed faithful to tithing. I, you know, when I've been tempted not to, I thought about his testimony. Or when I've been tempted not to be thankful, I thought about what him and his wife did. And boy, everything, the dam broke. And a gusher of blessings overtook their whole church. And got a beautiful place today, and they're doing great, and their kids' kids are doing great. They got challenges, everybody does. But what they do, they, they, they got my attention by being faithful and being thankful. So we do, we learn from other people. Because they have those good traits that they've developed a good habit in their life. We can be that person too. The people can see that we're faithful to serve the Lord and do whatever and let there be a challenge to them in Jesus' name. Amen. Father God, I pray for each dear person today that's watching. I thank you, Lord, for meeting all their needs. And God, we're so thankful that you saved us and baptized us in the Holy Spirit and gave us all your blessings. In Jesus' name, amen. Have you received Jesus Christ as your Lord? Maybe you're not too sure or you know for sure you've never done it. It's important that you do. There's nothing more important then receive Jesus Christ as your Lord. It's called being saved or being born again. You do that by just praying a prayer and confessing Jesus Christ as your Lord. It's real simple. And it guarantees you that when you pass away, you go be Jesus. I'd like for you to pray this prayer today. I'm going to read these scriptures. I'm going to read from Romans chapter 10, verse 9, verse 10, and verse 13. When I get done, I'm going to ask you to pray a prayer with me for you to receive Jesus Christ as Lord. Okay? Forewarning. So here in Romans chapter 10, the Bible says here in verse 9, verse 10, and verse 13, that if thou shalt confess thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in the heart of God is raised the dead, thou shalt be saved. For at the heart, 
Man believe right, so the mouth of the fish made salvation. Verse 13 says, For whosoever called my Lord shall be saved. So let's pray this together and say these words and mean it, and you'll receive Jesus Christ as your Lord. God, I come to you. Say this, God, I come to you to receive Jesus Christ as my Lord today. I believe in my heart, and I confess in my mouth that Jesus is Lord. I believe Jesus crucified, took my sins and judgment sin on the cross, died, was buried, and God, you raised him dead his life today. Jesus, you're my Lord. I receive you as my Lord and Savior today. Thank you, Lord, for saving me from going to hell. And I give you all the praise and glory, God, that now you're my Heavenly Father. Jesus, my Lord. Amen. You prayed that prayer? Good for you. I'd like to hear from you. You can email me at jesserichministries.com. Also, if you have a prayer request, we have a phone conference at 9 at 7 o'clock. That phone number and access code will be right here on our Facebook page. If you just received Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior, it's important you start reading the New Testament. Find a church you go to that preaches Jesus Christ the only way to heaven. And they'll help you grow and develop spiritually. If God leads you to go to another church later on, then you follow him. But it's important you get fed on God's word. So you can start growing and develop spiritually. Learn about all that Jesus has done for you through his death, burial, and resurrection. And, you know, if you have a church you're going to, good. That, that church, some churches aren't open. That pastor and that church is going to need your help. Just keep praying for them. Keep tithing and giving and doing whatever you did to help your church out. That pastor may not tell you, but, you know, he, needs his, he or she needs your help. So you keep going to be a blessing to them. Joy be with you day to day. So honored and thankful that she's able to watch. Till next time, it's Brother Rich. I love you. I'm praying for you. And remember, Jesus is always more than enough.